Right, hello, uh, you as is promised. Got the next rifle. This is a Krell Puncture Jumbo from Dave Palmer. I fancy this one myself, to be honest. Uh, quite, quite, you get quite a lot for the money. It comes with its own case. Really nice plastic case. Carrying handles. Just pop up like that. So there's your case. Turkish walnut, some old, really nice stock, really nice, and it's not as heavy as you think. I've actually put the uh, silence on it because it tells me it's got quite a bark. All the actual shroud that's on it, it's just for aesthetics, there's no battles in it, so that's why. Uh, even so, the majority of the sound coming out of it is from the hammer hitting the valve. Uh, side lever action. As for the puncture breaker, it's got safety at the back and you've got a power setting knob on it. So this is the sound. Not very loud at all really. Okay, so it's side lever action, it's got your manual safety at the back, like on the other crowls. Air cylinder is 425cc, and you fill that to 200 bar. That's, it's pretty hard to get information on this because some of it will be based on the US spec. Uh, but they're basically saying that uh, you can get up to 150 shots per charge. So that's when they say that, that's probably with the 2-2. Uh, uh, 177 you'll probably get 90 shots. Uh, overall length is 105 centimetres. That's excluding the uh, silencer or 41 inches. Bow length is saying here is 58 centimetres or 22.8 inches. And I do believe at that size that will be the FAC spec barrel. Uh, not the uh, not the UK version. The weight without any fittings should be 3.4 kilograms or 7.49 pounds. I will weigh the rifle as it stands. Uh, so manual safety. The actual rail on top is Piccadilly and Dove rail. So they do what the Krell manufacturers do. So it don't matter what uh, Optic uh, match you've got the rule fit it, and I think all manufacturers should do that to be honest. The actual power wheel on the side here is uh, just there. It's got quite a few settings, but it, you just turn it, it's no clicks or anything like that. It's basically a transfer, transfer port restrictor. Uh, if we look at the uh, Punchy breaker that I tested last time uh, was getting around 11, 11.2 foot pounds on average, full power, and around around uh, five foot pounds on low. So that was working spot on there. Uh, to fill the rifle, you fill it from the underneath. It's got the, a one eighth frosty uh, fitting on there. There's also a manometer gauge on there so you can read your pressure. Uh, these rifles are not regulated but you can regulate them. And it's done between the bottle and the valve. So it does extend the valve if you do it. Uh, there is one chap in America that's done it on, on his YouTube channel. And because it uh, puts the cylinder out probably about two inches, he's actually made a plastic uh, infill for it. But, uh, it's a shame really that uh, they don't make the stocks surround it a bit so uh, you can take into account fitting aftermarket regulators. Uh, that's about it really. As I say that's the uh, 
uh, half inch UNF thread that fits on the end of there if you're not using the, uh, the silencer but backyard use you definitely need it. Uh, so today I've got six pellets to test. I've got the uh, sovereigns at 8.44, BSA elites at 15.43, uh, RS RWS Superfield at 8.4, Barracuda Hunter at 10.49. BSA Max at 10.49 and the Busy Magnum at uh, 10.65. So, intentions are to do the 20 yard tests here and then in the morning I'll get up early and the pellets that do well in this test uh, I'll push them out to uh, normal shooting distances. Uh, these rifles also come with a Picatinny rail that you can put on the bottom so that's what I've done so I've got a, a bipod that I've fitted on and that's got a screw in it you can take the screw off if you don't want to rail on but uh, everything comes with a rifle uh, <clears throat> normally when you get uh, trouser nuts and things like this you don't skimp on what you get you get spare seals cases, everything. Anything you need to put on is a scope. And fill it with air. Uh, it did have a Nico Sterling 3 x 40 on it. I fitted my uh, Discovery scope for 16x44 side papers to get a bird's eye view through this later on. But uh, what I like about this is a lovely stock on it. Uh, rubber recall pads vented but not adjustable. What more do you want for your money? Uh, so, what we'll do next? Uh, chronograph and target shoot as per usual. Uh, I'll weigh the rifle in its current form. Uh, I can also do the uh, trade test, but I may do that tomorrow. But, uh, while the, uh, it's 10 past 7 at night now, so we'll have, while the uh, lights here, we'll just get on with the uh, range test I think. So uh, we'll get on with that.
Okay then. <clears throat> I've got uh, got a different scope on, so it may need zeroing in. First, uh, first pellet will be the uh, Range Master Sovereign. 8.4 grains. So made it from the uh, right hand side. Safety off. Nice. Okay. I'm going to go for the uh, bottom uh, centre black, see where it's shooting. Very low. Gone right off the target here. Just wondering if I set the uh, elevation down instead of what. Yes, I did. I can see it on the uh, on the slab. Right, trigger on this is as bad as what the other one was. First stage is creeping a long way. So uh, it did say I'd adjust it if I need to, and it needs it. Alright, we'll see what group we can get anyway. I have to paint some on these uh, turrets. Split the difference. Consider that zero.
Okay, 11.6 foot pounds. Right, I'm going to go for the uh, left hand yellow target. This trigger's not doing that. do put the RWS Super Dome through it which did well yesterday on the uh, puncture breaker uh, that's a, still come up with a crappy group I'm going to adjust the trigger see if that helps if not it could even be clipping the silencer it uh, should be a lot better than that Going for the left hand target, it didn't even hit anywhere near it. Right, I've got the elevation right. Ok 
Okay. That's first stage trouble, that's second. It's had some uh, lock tight put on the second stage. I can't understand why the triggers come out of fractured crap like this. Yeah. That's probably better actually. Ridiculous. I just can't see how it can be that bad. What I can think of it could be clipping the moderator. Uh, trouble is I can't take it off it's so loud without it. So we'll find out tomorrow. Get down the range. Uh, let's take the mag out, safety on. So there's a couple of them uh, that seem to have grouped all right in the in the middle, middle left, middle right. Uh, can't remember which they are now, but I'll look back through it. And uh, I'll go with those. See what we can get out of it. It's definitely got a problem. Trigger for one. And I've got a feeling it will be clipping that silencer as well. But uh, unless you take it off and try it, I, don't know, I will never know. But I know, like I say, Steve Shelley had a very pussy, fussy, pellet fussy barrel on his when he tested it and he only got three out of about 30 different tins to work. I think JSB and the uh, high speed uh, GTOs. But uh, what I'll do now, fill the rifle up, take the silencer off, assess the damage. And I'll be back with you tomorrow, hopefully with a, a tuned up trigger. I'll show you the filling process next. Okay then. That's on. That's about 100 bar from 200, so uh, she's used to 100 bar 
and what it's fired so far. Uh, two, four, seven lots of 14 shots. So 98 shots on 100 bar, that's pretty good actually. So instead of 90 shots, you're getting about 100 on a felt. So far. Okay, 200 bolt. Close the valve off, open the bleed valve. the gauge 200 bar right uh, day two down at the range uh, I've used the pull through through the barrel for about half a dozen times to make sure the barrel's clean I bought a couple of the pellets down that worked well yesterday and then I've got a few more varieties to try through it. Now if you go on the internet and look at the AE AC website with Steve Shelley on, he did a review on one of these uh, and they are very pellet fussy. It's not like the crowd punchy breaker, that was uh, not pellet fussy at all and shot like a laser. But if you look at Steve's, he's got about three pellets that shot well out to 25. And then his two two caliber that he had, only the 18.13s were only good at 50 and beyond. So, uh, whether we'll find one that works well through this, I know I've got two that seem pretty decent. We'll see. Uh, I've got the target set up at 25 yards. Uh, that's where I'm going to be doing the range test this morning. And the ones that do well, I'll push it out to uh, further distances. Uh, but what I will do now. I will actually weigh the rifle as it stands and that's got the uh, discovery scope on it and it's got a uh, bipod on it. I'll actually talk the silence off to see if that's the best way to do this. Okay then, get the weight right unit. In pounds, 10.1 or 4.6 kilograms. That's in uh, what it's got on there. I worked on the trigger last night, it's a lot lighter. We'll see how we get on with it. If it's too light, I'll, uh, I'll adjust it. So, start off then. I will use the two pellets that I brought down that I used yesterday first. And that is the uh, Day State Sovereigns at 10.3 and the Disney Magnum. What I've also brought down on the heavy side are the Barracuda Match. They weigh 10.65, so they'll be similar to the Magnums. Bought the other day states, these are the field targets at 10.25. Got Crossman Premier at 10.5. I've got a Webley Volumax Pelt on there, 8.18. Got the QYS 
they're 9.56. Got the Barracuda Greens, these are the super lights. Barracuda Greens at 6.48. And I've got the Field Target Trophy Greens at 5.56. And I've also got the Acapels. Uh, I'm not sure what these are off fun, but uh, you'll see on the screen now probably. Uh, now I was having problems the other day, we weren't reading these and I realised why. Because they're so light, I got it set to the UK spec, or they was going faster velocity than uh, it could pick up. Because some, with the FX crane it's set out into different groups of different speeds. Well obviously I should have had that set for US speeds. So uh, we'll see what power we get and how accurate they are. So uh, start off then then, we'll, uh, we'll do the 25 yard group with the sovereigns and then the Bisley Magnums and we'll see how we'll get on at 25 yards. Okay. All on behind this morning. Got up at five o'clock for breakfast and things like that, and uh, it's now quarter to seven. for the centre black target Triggers a hell of a lot better now Good palette, it's shooting where I want it to go. Right, I'm going to go for the tog on the left of it. Twelve point one. Four. Oh, I'm going to need a on that. Eight. Should travel feed that one, I think. Eleven. Point six. Eleven. Point two. Eleven. Point four. So let's shoot more for it. Pallets are not weighed, so I don't know if that's making a difference. But if you look at that group, that's, that's uh, grouped really well. I think I've set this too light, this trigger. I need to get, put a bit more on it. But uh, that's uh, 12 shots with. Uh, Three of them uh, going down the pal at the same time now. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty pleased with that. Now it makes you wonder now if that silencer was making a difference because that's pretty tight. Uh, right, I'll get on with the magnum. Put the same magazine. That can also make a difference. I really do like the rifle. Uh, 
to do well in FAC. It's supposed to be able to get uh, 50 shots at 34 pound. Uh, yeah. Uh, Those uh, day state sovereigns at 10.3 are pretty efficient down the barrel. <laughs> when three pellets went down the barrel, it was uh, 4.8 foot pound. Uh, so I can't really give you an average or anything on this. I'll have to do it at a time. Stick it on the computer, take out the 4.8, and we'll see what the average was. Okay then. Next up, the busy magnums. Right, I'm going for the top black circle. Right, there's two little groups going off there, and I believe that's because uh, of the change that I just made on the rifle. But there's definitely two groups there, if you can see. Not as good as the sovereigns, but they are usable pellets. Right. Next up then, because it's doing more day states, I've got the day scale, the day state uh, field target heavies, 10.25 grains, so we'll see how they perform. So that's the uh, day state field target heavies. Go for the bottom black target.
Probably low on the power as well, so it obviously don't suit the barrel. Now it is a choke barrel and it's, it was quite tight when I did the pull through it, it was right at the end when it really got tight. So maybe that's, that's got something to do with it. Nine. Nine. Don't like these, does it? Surprising that, I thought it would do better than that. Right, next one I'll go with the Barracuda match at 1065. Uh, these are HN. Um, I believe that basically they like the Bisley Magnums at the same weight and the same shape, made in the same factory. Uh, see if they're exactly the same or not. But any rifle you, you buy, you need to test different pellets for it because even a rifle of the same make and model, it's all down to the barrel and they might not like the same pellets. So unless you try them, you'll never know. So it can be expensive. Uh, that's why they do uh, pellet sample packs. Uh, but uh, when you've got a pellet fussy rifle, you find out what works and then you stick to that pellet for that particular rifle. And this is one of those rifles actually, so uh, looks like it uh, only likes the uh, day state songs at 10.3. Right, I'm going to change the target because it's getting a bit messy down there. Uh, and then we'll come back to the uh, back through the match. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay then, back through the match. 10.65 grains. And for the uh, centre black. Point three. Ten. Point nine. 
time. Ten. Point. One. Ten. Point. Nine. Ten. Point. Six. Ten. Point. Seven. Right. So they're no good. Uh, okay, I'll go on to uh, the last of the heavyweights at uh, 10.5 and these are the uh, Crossman Premier Domed. Let's see if they're any better. So when you get your new rifle or whatever, you need to uh, do these sort of things first. Find out what works and then get onto uh, the fun start side of shooting. Because unless you sort out the uh, the accuracy, you'll never be able to shoot. That's proved itself it can shoot with the right pellet. Get the wrong pellet and it's a shotgun. And that's what fussy barrels are. Uh, I mean, you can put people off an air rifle altogether. Because they've been using the wrong pellets and well, this is no good. Well, sometimes it's just down to ch change a pellet that will make the difference. What I will do, I'll leave a link to Steve Shalley's video on this and you'll get to see what I mean about his pellet choice. I mean, he spends about eight hours a week doing one video because he tests that many pellets. Does a good job. Okay, rifles top back up. And now we're moving on to the crossmans. Right, go for the top black circle. Moving on, QIS Streamline, these are the Chinese pellets, do really well through some of my rifles and uh, others I've tried them through. Let's see if this one is uh, one that works or not. A bit disappointing when uh, so many different pellets that don't suit it. I was actually thinking about buying one of these, would I still buy one? I probably would actually if I've got if I've got the one good pellet that will shoot through it. So I like everything about the rifle apart from the results we're getting up to now. But uh, I'd just stick to that one pellet. So you do get a lot for your money. 
Although at the end of the day, it needs to shoot well. I mean, all, all I would say to Crowley is sort your barrels out. Because that's what it is, it's a barrel thing. They're not all that bad, are they? As we've proved. See if this one can uh, cut the mustard. Bottom target. No. Right, I'll stick another target up. On each of these groups, you're looking at between one and a half and two inches at 25 yards. Alright, right, next up, I'm going to uh, go with the VMX and then I'm going to go with the Super Light pellets. Alright then. Where's the MX? I think we're running every barrel. We're running some. Let's see if this lights on. Top target. Okay, more promising than a lot of the other pallets, to be honest. That was the Webley uh, VMX. Okay then, I'm going to go for the super lights now. We've got the Barracuda the Greens at 6.48 range and the uh, Field Target Tracer Greens at uh, 5.56. So what I'll do when I put these in, I'll have to make sure that I put them on the US settings because the velocity ought to be higher than it is here. 
Right then. Uh, and that's why it wasn't reading them the other day. The velocity was too high for the uh, craving. No JSP have just bought one out, which I want to try and test. It's probably based on the GTOs that they get in America and we don't get here. The thing is, they might, they might be super fast, but they lose the energy too fast. And as soon as they start getting supersonic, they're not accurate anyway, so you can't see the sodding point. Maybe if they made a slug out of it, it might be better, I don't know. Right. Let's see how these get on. Full target trophy greens. 5.56 grains. I'm going to go for the bottom target. Okay, getting something resembling a group. Uh, it's so light, and it's the foot poundage. The wind is picking up as well now. So I've not got much time. Right, going on to the barcode of greens now. I mean, to be honest, the last three pallets have the last two pallets I've used have been better than the car before it, so... So it's the same shape as the uh, Barracuda match and the uh, Bisley Magnums, but a lot lighter. Then. Middle target. Okay, we actually had a group going on there. Top and left. One, two, three, four, five, six. So eight pellets went in the group and six were flyers. It's not bad actually. So if you're going for a light pellet, you could try that one. That's the Barracuda. On to greens. Oh, no, by two degrees. Uh, 
I don't think it's worth trying anymore. I've got the Wedley Acapel, but they'll be like the Crossing Premier. I've got Falcon Accuracy Plus. I can't see them doing any good either. But what I will do, I'll do, I'll do a group of the Falcons on the same car, but low down. I'll, I'll fire the target and I'll aim it where it's uh, where the last point of the impact was. See what we get. So not a bit crony in this one, but uh, we'll see if it's any good. I mean, there's two, four, six, eight, nine tins of pellets have gone through there, and there's only one of them that works. To be honest. Okay, last up, it's Falcon Accuracy Plus. It's, uh, there is 7.33 grains according to that, so they're not very heavy. In for the top target. They're no good. I mean, to be honest, probably better off getting a, a wall for barrel to it, a new barrel. It's just not performing, is it? Alright, these are going back to the ones that should be shooting okay. It's ridiculous when you get barrels like this when it only likes one pellet out of like 20 different pellets it's crazy how can a pellet be that much different you think So they're, they're the ones to go for. If you buy one of these, try one, try the uh, Day State Sovereign Range Masters, Range Master Sovereign, 10.3 grains. It's absolutely ridiculous when you think about it. I right, just adjust. Uh, it's one click at 100, so it's four picks at 25. Yeah, so they look like they're working. What I'll do now, I'll do one last group at the bottom. I'm almost out of pallets on these as well. Need to get some more. So when these are gone, that's the end of the test. And when I think about it, it's going where I'm aiming at. All the others tended to be flying off to the left. Hey, what's that all about? Is it the uh, crown of the barrel, the choke? I don't know. Don't make sense, does it? Right. Bottom 
target. About 11 of those went through the same hole, so there's nothing wrong with a rifle when it's got the right pallet. Okay, not many left, probably a couple of mags. I'll do, uh, I'll do some reactive targets now. So this is a fun bit for me. Thank <laughs> you. 
Fuck off, yo! Alright, end of day three. I had time to look back on the rifle, how it's performed, and what I think about it. Uh, it's been fun, but it's also been frustrating because the accuracy is just not what it should be, unless you've got just the one pallet that works. And that is the uh, Day State Range Master Sovereigns at 10.3 grains. Now it's no good having a rifle that can only shoot one pallet. Because sooner or later that pallet will go out of production. And then you're left with a rifle that can't shoot anything. And that's what this is all about. Now thinking back on how it's performed, it's just not good enough. Uh, I mean Crow's had problems before with the crowd punchy breakers with the barrels being an issue for accuracy so why haven't they sort the barrels out on these? Is this a one-off? I mean like I say Steve Shally did a video on an FAC version he received and his was pellet pussy as well so there's definitely a, a barrel issue going off somewhere uh, the crowds I've all heard from everybody and, and found out myself that the, the triggers are appalling straight off the shelf Yet when you when you tune them yourself, you can get them right. So why aren't you tuning them at the factory like that? Uh, it's not good for the retailers because if they're selling these rifles based on they shoot well, they're not going to sell them if everybody's selling them back all the time. So uh, even retailers, you need to check the rifles before you sell them and get the trigger down to where it should be. It's not an hard job to do. Uh, I mean, I've, I've shown you how, how you can adjust them. Uh, when you do adjust them, you've probably got to put Loctite on again because uh, they tend to move after so many shots, so that can uh, upset it. But uh, just little fine things like that can make all the difference. Uh, I mean, it's a lovely rifle to look at, and it's a lovely rifle to shoot apart from the trigger which can be sorted out, but you can't sort a barrel out. Uh, I mean, I'll suggest to uh, Dave Palmer to take this back to the shop he bought it from, which I think was Leicester Eagles, and get them to send it back to Crow to sort the barrel out. Uh, I mean, I've even discussed this with uh, Cliff Kirkman at the club, who's a good engineer, and he's suggested to sod the barrel, or buy a, buy a new one from Walther or CZ, and he'll fit it. Uh, I mean, you can you can buy new barrels for 80 pound and match grade barrels for about 120. So uh, I mean, they're supposed to be Hammer Forge barrels, but they're nowhere near what BSA barrels are. Uh, I mean, that's what it needs. I think it just needs a new barrel. Uh, and yet, I tell you now, if, if you got a barrel that was right, it wasn't pellet forcing like this is. It's a keeper. You won't get rid of it. Uh, I mean, if I could pick one up second hand, I probably just couldn't get myself a new barrel and, and get it fitted on. One that I know is a good barrel. But apart from that, nice to look at, well balanced, nice to shoot, once you get the trigger sorted out. And if, if you are somebody that does indoor shooting like 10 metre range, these rifles are ideal because you can wind them down to 5 foot pounds. Uh, that's, only, that's the only quibble I've got about it. I mean, Dave, if you want to take this rifle back to the retailer, tell them you've got a barrel issue with it. Tell them to look at my uh, uh, YouTube page, and you'll see I've put I think what, about 15 pallets for it, and there's only one of those 15 works for it. Two of them was okay, but not good enough. Uh, so I don't know if it's got a bad crown or what. If there's anybody out there that's got one of these, 
just get back to me on, on the uh, YouTube page and say, tell me what your rifle shooting like, if you've got a good barrel in it, or, or is it bad in yours as well? Because the more people that report on these and send them back, the sooner that Crowell will get the issue sorted, like they did with the uh, punchy breakers in the Mark II. Uh, but I would have thought, after having problems with the Mark II punchy breakers, they would have done the barrels across the range, and the punchy breaker barrels ought to fit in these. Another problem I've found this, it's nearly a 22 inch barrel, that's what you get on an FAC, not on a tw sub 12 foot pad, so hence you've got no baffles in here because there's no room for them. So by the time you've put a silence on, it's right out there. So it could do a shorter barrel, most PCPs are 15 to 17 inch long, or 22, that is an FAC barrel. Okay, if you want to wind the power up, but uh, if it's shooting like crap, and you've not got an FAC license, it's no good anyway, is it? Uh, but yeah, I mean, the stocks are fantastic. I mean, if you used to buy that stock, well, many anyway, you pay 300 quid for that. Uh, rifles themselves, depending on where you buy them, between 550 and 520, which is a, a good price for a, a medium, medium uh, quality here rifle, but uh, it's let down by the bad barrel. I mean, they could continue with this, no problem with it, as long as you just stick to that one pellet. But like I say, pellets don't last forever. Uh, they change the designs and that over time, so uh, you need more than one little shoot through it. <coughs> but uh, I enjoyed shooting it. I put lots of lead down the barrel. I tried all different things to see if that was a problem, like uh, cleaning the barrel. That didn't work. Uh, took the silence off in case it was clipping. That, that wasn't clipping. Uh, checked on that, but uh, apart from that, I know mean, it sounds bad, but uh, honest to God, I don't mean to sound like that, but that's just the way it's performed on this one. I do like the rifle, I, I would get one. I was going to get one actually, uh, but uh, just the barrel that's let this one down, uh, being so fussy, uh, triggers fine now. It's too noisy to fire here. It gives off like a cannon because there's no suppression whatsoever. Like I said, if you've got a shorter barrel, you could put baffles in it and, and suppress it, but you can't on this. You just need to fit a silencer. The actual barrel finishes there. So, that is uh, two crows the punchy breaker and now the punchy jumbo in this one, which I really like. Uh, coming up. Over the next few sessions will be a custom rifle manufacturer called Ripley. So they've got a Ripley. It used to belong to uh, Rob Taylor, but now it belongs to Dave uh, Dave Oldham. Also got a Red Wolf Safari in 12 foot pound. I've probably got a couple more in the pipeline as well. Uh, a couple more day states, uh, day states are for one. Uh, probably an ear arms, uh, not the S510, the latest one, the sport or forget what it's called now. Uh, Ultimate sport, and that's it. Uh, I've got a day state uh, Wolverine R in. Uh, Forest stock, probably get a, a day state uh, Siri Rosso 007. Uh, yeah, so there's a few, there's a few waiting to come out. Uh, so just watch this space. It does take me quite a while when you got a rifle like this, and you've got to put 15 different types of pallet through it. But uh, Hopefully it'll do well, and now I can get down the range, we can push them out to through the ranges. Uh, I'll probably still do shooting on the backyard as an intro before I get out to the range the following day, but uh, I think we'll go into the right format now, so uh, we'll catch you in the next video. And uh, remember, if you've got one of these, crowd punchy jumbo, let me know uh, how yours is shooting. Uh, I mean, like I say, I found the triggers are easy to uh, to adjust, so don't let that put you off. Take the stock off, 
there's just two screws to do it. Uh, that's it really. It's like the uh, crowd puncher breaker, I'd buy one of them tomorrow for good. So impressed with that one. Laser accurate, you just need to adjust the trigger on that, that's it. So then, I'll catch you in the next video.